Okay, I think uh, now is a good time to get going. So thank you everyone for joining me. I wanna to try to keep this webinar pretty brief. We're not gonna to get too, too technical, but I'm hoping to enlighten the specific highlights of these different resins that currently um, vastly expand the capabilities on the Origin One system and other DLP printing platforms. Quickly going in, a little bit about me. I have my Bachelor's of Science in Mechanical Engineering from the University of Utah. This is also where I am stationed. This is Go Engineers headquarters. We have two Origin One systems here, in addition to majority of the Stratasys equipment. Um, I grew up skiing. I'm a motorcycle enthusiast, and Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday. I have a pretty extensive background in CNC machining, additive manufacturing, CAM programming, product design, and so forth. A short bit about Go Engineer. Um, we provide training, online resources, SolidWorks, Stratasys printers, Creoform scanners, DriveWorks, metal 3D printers, and pretty much every engineering tool package that one could desire. Um, one of the most important and notable points on this slide is the 35 years in business. This is something that we could not do without you joining us, participating, and supporting the products that we provide. I just want to give a real quick thank you to everyone, and let's continue this moving forward. Our purpose is to empower you the creation of today's products, leading to tomorrow's innovations. We are the number one technical resource worldwide for both SolidWorks and Stratasys, so I am extremely happy to be presenting these products to you today. We recently merged with CATI as a refresher, and now we are able to cover the entire United States. This is both SolidWorks and Stratasys products. We've also expanded Stratasys up into Canada. We have metal 3D printing from both Velo 3D and Exact Metal, along with the full fledge of Stratasys printers. Our 3D scanning works with Arteric 3D, Creaform, and a newer company, Peel, at a lower cost, easy to enter market. Today's focus isn't about those products. Today's focus is on the open materials available via OpenAM on the Origin One. These products are quite unique and novel in their ESD capabilities, fully ceramic and high temperature, high pressure for molding and tooling type applications. The ESD material is mostly provided by MechNano. The ceramics are created by Teton 3D, BASF, and Somos. Somos Covestro was recently acquired by Stratasys, so there will be even more expansion and material development happening on the ceramic side. McNano is based out of Arizona, specializing in ESD resin. What is static electricity? What is ESD and why does it matter? ESD or electrostatic discharge occurs when an electron moves from one object to another. You may have noticed this um, when jumping on a trampoline wearing socks or you run on carpet, touch the metal handle, boom, zap. It's fun, but it's also extremely expensive. In the manufacturing industry, this can cost billions of dollars and it is a problem that needs to be mitigated. Um, what defines if a material is conductive, dissipative, or antistatic, or an insulative depends on the actual resistivity per square surface area or volumetric. The range that we want to be in is 10 to the sixth or through 10 to the ninth ohms per square area unit. What solutions currently exist and what sets McNano apart? 
Currently, there's conductive fillers that have been infused with FDM or SLS materials. These fillers include steel wire, fibers, aluminum flakes, nickel-coated graphite, carbon fiber powder, or even carbon nanotubes. Um, most of these materials, TPU, ABS, PC, or nylon 11, all suffer the same issues. They are anisotropic by nature in their Z axis, which vastly reduces the performance of their ESD capabilities. Furthermore, the thicker layer lines prevent small fine details um, from occurring. And in a integrated chip assembly, when you have those ridges, that will cause a card to get caught. Um, this catching will result in sloughing, which can shut down lines and be detrimental to the manufacturing process. Why should we look at McNano and what separates this? No sloughing will occur. It is precise and isotropic in its ESD characteristics. This is due to the nature of VAT polymerization and the core chemistry um, driving McNano's technology. They use, uh, see here, With the use of their resin, um, manufacturers are able to go directly to a part using the ESD capable materials. Um, previously, you had two options. It's, hey, we can print this using a FDM or nylon part. It may or may not work, but we probably will not be able to set up our automated assembly line. We won't be able to test it and further work out the kinks that's going to happen along this automated assembly line. Um, that process can take weeks to months. And in the meantime, we had sent off our designs to get that tooling made. We're waiting, we're waiting. What McNano offers is the ability to bypass that waiting time of setup, print directly the kitting tray, the PCB holder, the masking uh, parts to vastly reduce that initial setup time. What is the actual driving force behind McNano? The key discretized carbon nanotubes. They are stronger than diamond or harder than diamond, stronger than steel, and more conductive than copper. They're also 10,000 times smaller than a human hair. Now, the key word is discretized. This small differentiator removes the inherent problem of clumping, which I had previously noted to uh, inhibit the ability of other FDM or SLS type solutions. This clumping can very easily be noted under a SEM microscope. On the left, I have a competitor's ESD resin, and on the right, I have McNano's ESD resin. The large white space that can be noted with dark, black, and purple um, regions, that large white space is inconsistent and in irregularities. This leads to poor electrical performance and undesirable results. The tensile modulus overall will see a decrease along with the strength. The impact resistance is decreased in addition to a variable ESD setting or ESD rating. When we get a uniform dispersion of carbon nanotubes, this leads to a more uniform strength, a higher tensile modulus, higher impact resistance, and uniform isotropic ESD characteristics. Some use cases for this material would be tooling, jigs, fixtures that are used in soldering or welding. Um, the soldering components can also include masking boots, assembly aids, fluted grip knobs, integrated circuit packaging, PCB packaging, the actual trays, 
the clamshells, carriers, connecting clamps. In addition to tweezers, dispensing nozzles, uh, SMD tips, end of arm, cooling connectors, and more. There's mill, mill DTL circular connectors, bearings, and retaining clips that have also been completed using this material. And functional prototypes for end use parts. So kind of going back to before with reducing the time to get up and running by creating a functional prototype using ESD compliant material, you are able to print the final part geometry, set up the additional assembly and automation steps required, work out any bugs that may occur, and actually pump out a few of your final integrated uh, chipboards or whatever else it is that you are manufacturing. On the left here is an SMD pick and place nozzle. I want to make note of how fine of features we are able to hit using the Origin One in conjunction with MacNano resin. Um, on the right hand side is an actual kitting tray. These kitting trays are quite large, um, they're up to 14 inches in height. But we have features that are 10 thousandth of an inch, 20 thousandth of an inch fine. Being able to hit these fine features on a large system like the Origin One uh, really sets this apart. Their current material profile expands across multiple temperature ranges, going from 90 degrees Celsius up to 250 degrees Celsius. In the lower range, we have a tough material and a rigid material. They're quite similar in electrical characteristics with the uh, differentiator being the impact strength and elongation at break. Uh, tough will be better performing in both categories where rigid will be all around more stiff of a material. They also have the capability of running a flexible ESD material. This is currently a master batch, and it is tuned either by you as the user or in conjunction with MacNano to meet the desired electrical properties. Once you tune this master batch, um, whatever it is set to, say 10 to the sixth, it will remain at that value. You will have isotropic electrical properties throughout that master batch. Um, working into the high temperature range, there is IND380. This is a partnership completed with Henkel and MacNano. And C-Lite. C-Lite is a partnership with Tethon 3D and MacNano. Um, I do want to make a, a point with C-Lite. As I've worked with this material, um, I discovered it is a non-Newtonian, so it will behave much differently than standard resins. Um, print times are going to be slightly longer due to this high viscosity and unique material characteristics. Moving into the tough materials, Polyspectra, it, their whole purpose is to innovate engineers uh, or help innovate engineers, 3D print end use components that they can trust using the world's most rugged photopolymer resin. Polyspectra creates two resins uh, known as Core Alpha and Core Black. Core stands for cyclic olefon resin. Olefon is a thermoset based composite that has been used for decades in demanding applications such as wind turbine blades, fuel cell components, um, and some oil and gas type stuff. It is a noble winning chemistry that was recently adapted to 3D printing by Polyspectra. Um, it actually took about five years of research and development with a, either a master's or a doctorate thesis driving this whole material. Some notable properties, the high toughness and 
high ductility. It has a high working temperature, excellent chemical resistance. It's functionally diverse. It has high weatherability, meaning it will su survive in an outdoor environment, underwater, under sun, and it is biocompatible. What's so special here? The robust chemical resilience leans well towards the aerospace, automotive, and medical industries where it will be coming in contact with harsh fluids, uh, cleaning, aids, and or solvents. It has a very low water absorption at less than 0.1% after 24 hours. This is near high grade engineering materials like peat or PET. The glass transition temperature is 164 degrees Celsius with an HDT at 139 to 132. It retains 80% of its impact strength at a temperature range from negative 50 to 120 degrees Celsius. The impact strength unnotched exceeds 800 joules per meter with the notch strength being 35 joules per meter. There is dielectric properties um, available and more complete charts and graphs if this is desired. To kind of close things out on the properties themselves, the total elongation at break of 20% paired with a 139 degrees Celsius HDT is quite unique for this material. No other photopolymers are able to hit this high of an elongation at break with that high of an HDT. Um, furthermore, we can actually tune this to be about 100% based on our post curing profile that we use. This slide is actually a chart showing the elongation at break along our x-axis and the HDT along the y. Core alpha sits right in the middle of this chart. Previously, we had stuff lining the left and the bottommost region. You had to pick. I can have high elongation, but I can't have high heat resistance, or high heat resistance, but not high elongation. Core alpha is the first of hopefully many materials to start filling in this void in between the, the middle. Another chart to display the fluid capability of core. Um, we have three different towers that we're looking at, with blue being the Young's modulus, orange the ultimate tensile, and gray elongation at break. This is a relative change in those mechanical properties after submersion of 24 hours. MEK is quite notable. Um, this chemical is extremely harsh and likes to eat up pretty much everything. I can't talk about core alpha without talking about the material handling and considerations. Core is intended for an industrial, manufacturing, or laboratory facility. It is not recommended to print at a, in a home office or a uh, like cubicle type office environment. We should always be wearing PPE when handling, and the origin one should be connected to an activated carbon filter or the appropriate uh, filtration on a ducting system. Having the machine inside a fume hood would also be an adequate solution. The whole work area must be well ventilated. This includes the surrounding area to the origin where you'll be cleaning parts and curing parts. And additional equipment includes a refrigerator or freezer to store the resin below five degrees Celsius. Again, this is quite unique to core alpha. An oven or warm water bath will be needed to then melt this material back
back into a liquid state so we can print it. That warm temperature only needs to be 35 degrees Celsius. Again, we'll need to have a well ventilated area to be cleaning these parts and a vacuum oven for final curing of these parts. Uh, currently, Cascade Tech offers a validated solution. There is an experimental microwave cure solution. It's essentially a submersible bath that you put the part into and put it into the microwave. I can't speak for this personally as to how well it works, but it is a consideration that it will require additional equipment. Um, this is hazardous. You will need to dispose of it accordingly. We also have ceramic filled materials by Teton 3D, Somos, and BASF. Teton 3D and Stratasys kind of partnered together to create this Komatsu light. The name is derived from a Japanese word meaning high density, with the English suffix light meaning stone. Komatsu light is a high density, high purity alumina resin or VAT photopolymerization 3D printing. Printed parts are thermally treated to create fully dense ceramic stone objects. The final HDT sits around 1700 degrees Celsius, making it usable in a large variety of environments and conditions. What is so special about a ceramic 3D printable material. On a VAT uh, system like the Origin one, we can get high detail, high resolution for various applications that require polarizing of these parts post printing. The material is a 99.8% alumina with an average shrinkage of 9.61% across the board. Since this material goes through a post-centering stage, it will shrink in the X, Y, and Z axis. This value is a known value by Teton 3D. When working with it, um, we will want to scale up the part prior to printing so that it meets the desired tolerances post-printing and post-centering. The density is extremely high at 3.82 grams per uh, cubic centimeter. This is about triple to quadruple what the standard resin would be at. Has a low porosity of about 0.83% and a moderate water absorption. Has a really high compressive strength and extremely high flexural strength. Teeth on 3D offers a whole lot more materials than just the Comet Sue Light. I highly encourage you to go check out their website, see what's available. They have iron filled, porcelain filled. So most perform HW is a less intense ceramic photopolymer. This material does not require post-sintering. It will only require a post-UV and thermal cure. What that also means is minimal shrink and minimal warpage will occur to your prints. We still get the same benefit of high strength, high stiffness, and excellent heat resistance without the added complexity of sintering apart. Now we will not be able to polarize these parts, but we will reap the benefits of higher strength, uh, which is ideal for injection molding, cooling, wind tunnel testing, electrical casing and housings, or high temp testing. Furthermore, there is a rapid tooling guide available and quite a, quite a bit of information surrounding 3D printed molds and tooling. Um, a coworker of mine, Tim Crennan, actually recently posted a injection molding 
webinar, which I also implore you to check out if this is something you want more details about. Here's some of the mechanical properties of Perform HW. Um, a higher HDT, or sorry, higher density than your standard photopolymers and an extremely high HDT, 289C. The compressive strength and elastic modulus are quite high. We're sitting at about 9,000 megapascals on its modulus and 87 megapascal on the strength. This stuff is stiff. It is tough and it is strong. The final material that we're going to discuss today, BASF's RG3280. This material is very similar to Perform HW, a moderately loaded ceramic that requires UV and thermal post cure. Um, no sintering is required for this material. It has a, the, the same applications and similarities to Perform HW, just a different chemical manufacturer. The exact properties do vary slightly um, from the, the two, but we're within the same ballpark. And to tie things off with the final ceramic materials, I want to discuss the handling and considerations here as well. All ceramic loaded materials will require both UV curing um, this will happen inside the machine, and a thermal post cure. What that thermal, thermal post cure looks like depends on the exact resin used. Um, our high temperature ceramics will require a sintering kiln, same type that is used in glassware or ceramic applications, whereas the lower temp will just require a programmable oven. Common PPE should always be worn when handling these materials. That includes a lab coat, gloves, glasses, mask, closed toed shoes. The work area must be well ventilated. And the additional equipment, like mentioned before, be that UV chamber, programmable oven, and a programmable kiln. You will still want to ab abide by the local regulations for chemical waste disposal. With that, I would like to bring this webinar to a halt and open it up for any questions from the audience. There was a, quite a bit of different information there. I hope that somebody came with a specific question in mind. While anyone thinks about a possible question, I would also like to uh, make a note if you are interested in having a part printed with any of the above materials talked about today, reach out to me, reach out to Go Engineer. Uh, we can do this as either a benchmark or a service. Furthermore, we are partners with all of the companies um, that were listed above in this presentation. So we can work hand in hand with you to develop a material that doesn't even exist. Okay, well. Nobody has any questions uh, for me at this time. Go ahead and simmer on it. Once you know the exact question, shoot me off an email. Me or anyone else on my team would love to answer that for you. With that, thank you for joining us today and have a good one.